We welcome you to another Sunday School lesson. Sunday School is a blessing and gift from God. Totally New Home While exiled on the Isle of Patmos for witnessing for Jesus Christ, the Apostle John received a revelation from God by the Holy Spirit concerning future events that will culminate with the end of all history. God is making all things new and John now sees hope beyond wonder, as a new heaven and a new earth are formed. God is removing evil from humanity, separating out the good. The old earth and heaven have disappeared, even the sea is gone. Then, John sees a new Jerusalem coming directly from God in heaven like a bride being given away at a wedding. Everyone is celebrating, shouting that the throne and presence of God is now among us all, as God himself now lives with us and within us for eternity. Then the greatest comfort is given, God wipes away all of our sorrows and fears so there is no more death, suffering, or pain as evil is wiped away for good. The promise of heaven can inspire us to live well on earth, even as we long for eternity. Our lesson now begins with chapter 21. Our first verse says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. John says he saw a new heaven and a new earth. God will not just refurbish the old ones, they will be destroyed, because they have been corrupted by sin and death, and replaced by something new in character, or fresh in quality. The main emphasis is its uniqueness, it is quite different from the old. In scripture, heaven usually refers to the universe, the outer space that surrounds the earth. John also said and there was no more sea. Most of the earth is now covered with water which is vital to man's survival, but apparently in the new earth there will be no bodies of water except for one river. In the scriptures, the sea is seen as a place of storms and grave danger, and in Revelation, a symbol of evil, unbelief, and apostasy, as well as the source of persecution of the saints, and the place of the wicked dead. In addition the sea and its unpredictability make it an appropriate illustration of a doubter's mind, James 1 6. Verse 2 says, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. John saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, descending from heaven from God. Human beings have not been able to build a perfect city, but God is the builder of a city that is perfect. It descends from him and is holy. Cities today are notorious for crimes committed in them, but God's city contains no crimes. It is holy as God is holy. The New Jerusalem is a real city, not simply a symbol. It is the eternal home of the bride who prepares meticulously to look her best for her wedding day, so this implies God plans to present the New Jerusalem as an exceptionally beautiful, carefully arranged city. All God's saints will live there eternally. We are told that the New Jerusalem is a city that comes down from God which seems to indicate that the city is already created. Jesus told his disciples that he was going to heaven to prepare a place for them to live, John 14 1-3. John continues to say in verse 3, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look! God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. In the old Jerusalem, God dwelt in the temple, in the Holy of Holies, into which only the high priest could enter once a year. In Israel's temple there was a veil that separated God from his people. In eternity there will be no veil of separation, all saints will enjoy an intimacy with God that we have never experienced before. God will be present always with all his people. John heard a loud voice from the throne proclaim, Look, the dwelling place of God is with men. According to this verse, God's people, will enjoy close fellowship with God, one that resemble the experience Adam and Eve enjoyed with God, in the Garden of Eden before they fell into sin. During the millennium, 
the unglorified believers still had the long-standing promise that the pure in heart would see God, in the new Jerusalem they will enjoy the fulfillment of that promise. John went on to say in verse 4, He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Not only will the old heaven and earth pass away, John also said God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. Tears will be gone because the things that caused them will also be gone for there shall be no more death. Because of sin, death entered the world, but by resurrection to a new and sinless life, the saints will leave death behind. Pain, sorrow, mourning, the passing of friends and loved ones, and dying are all harsh realities of this life, but they will be over, once and for all when we take up residence in the new Jerusalem. Should there be tears in heaven, God will quickly wipe them away through his comforting presence. In verse 5, the apostle went on to say he who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. John also heard a voice from the throne affirming God's declaration of his making all things new is completely dependable. Apparently John was so overwhelmed by what he saw and heard that he stopped writing for the moment. Therefore, the Lord commanded him to write, for these words are trustworthy and true. Indeed, everything God says is trustworthy and true, as Titus 1-2 affirms, God, never lies. Everything John had seen and heard will happen. Verse 6 says, He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. This verse tells us the speaker from the throne identified himself as the Alpha and the Omega. These are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. When the glorified Son of God first appeared to John on the island of Patmos, John had just introduced God's status as I am the Alpha and the Omega, who is, and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty, Revelation 1.8. So, the voice from the throne belonged to Jesus, the risen, Almighty Lord, who is eternal. He declared it is done, referring to his spoken words about creating all things new, Jesus affirms that what he began has come to pass. He always finishes what he begins, Philippians 1 6. Those who thirst for spiritual satisfaction find that Jesus gives it without charge. His grace saves and satisfies the thirsting soul. During his earthly ministry, Jesus told a spiritually thirsty woman at Jacob's well, Whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him, a spring of water welling up to eternal life, John 4:14. 4, also, the fourth beatitude promises that those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be satisfied, Matthew 5:6. That promise is fulfilled entirely and completely in eternity. God continues to say verse 7, Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God and they will be my children. Temptations and trials come to all believers, but through faith in Christ believers can overcome each enticement to do evil and every trial. Paul assured the believers at Rome, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, Romans 8:37. The Apostle John, identified believers as overcomers. In 1 John 4 1-3 he wrote that many false prophets, including the spirit of the Antichrist, had gone into the world, but he said, Little children, you are from God and have overcome them, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world, 1 John 4 4. Believers overcome the false prophet at the risk of losing their lives. They too, are among the victorious to whom the Lord promises an inheritance in the eternal city and an intimate relationship with himself. Verse 8 says, But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, 
those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. The New Jerusalem is the eternal home of believers, but unbelievers must spend eternity in the lake of fire that burns with fire and sulfur. Unbelievers are identified in this verse as the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and liars. Cowardly unbelievers fear for various reasons. Some fear they might lose their possessions or their jobs or their friends or their comfortable life if they trust in the Savior. But as Jesus taught, it is worthless to gain the whole world but lose one's soul, Mark 8:36. The faithless lack trust in Jesus as Savior. These unsavory characters experience the second death, which is burning forever but never being consumed, in the lake of fire. Their refusal to trust in Christ had imprisoned them in their sins, and subsequently in the lake of fire. Our final verse says one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. One of the seven angels that poured the vials full of the seven last plagues to the earth, invited John to come and see the bride, the Lamb's wife. Perhaps this angel is the same one that had shown the Apostle John the woman who sat on a scarlet beast, Revelation 17 1-3. The angel now shows John another woman. Whereas the woman on the scarlet beast was thoroughly immoral, this woman is thoroughly pure. She is the Lamb's bride and wife. The first woman symbolized the beast's city, Babylon. The woman here represents God's city, the New Jerusalem. Once again, the Bible contrasts unrighteousness and righteousness, impurity and purity, evil and good, what is marked for destruction and what abides eternally. A bride presents herself to her fiancé as beautiful. The residents of the city, the church, are the bride of Christ, Ephesians 5 25-27. An empty city without its citizens cannot be the bride. A new home. There is nothing like a fresh new start. Most people have experienced the sadness that accompanies failure and the joy of a new beginning. The Christian life itself is a new beginning, a new birth. All things become new. This will be the case with the heaven and the earth. God's purging of sin and death will one day be complete. In eternity we won't have to live with a patched up world, one still under the curse of sin. God's new order will not be a remodeling job on the present universe. It will be totally new. Jesus, the author of salvation and the maker of our present heavens and earth will also make the new heaven and earth. For sure, God does not make an inferior product. Perfection is assured in God's new creation. The final dwelling place of God's redeemed will be the new heaven and new earth. Yes, all things will be new. A new home. 1. Don't become too attached to this world, God will replace it with a completely new and different one, Revelation 21 1. God never removes something from our lives without replacing it with something far better. 2. God will give his children the best and perfect dwelling place in the new heaven and new earth, Revelation 21 2. God will dwell with, and comfort his people in this perfect place. 3. If the Holy Spirit dwells within us now, just imagine how wonderful it will be to dwell personally with God one day in the new holy city, Revelation 21 3. In eternity, God will be present always with all his people. 4. Only in the eternal future with God will there be no more death, suffering and pain, Revelation 21 4. All wrongs are made right, and all suffering of all kinds are gone. 5. God has declared that he will make everything new and we can count on his word, because he cannot lie, Revelation 21 5. God is faithful and reliable in keeping his promise. 6. 
Jesus Christ began the history of the earth and he will finish it, Revelation 21 6. Jesus always finishes what he begins. 7. Believers are overcomers who will also inherit good things from God, Revelation 21 7. The overcomers get an inheritance in the eternal city and an intimate relationship with himself. 8. Those who have not placed their faith in Christ will not enter the new order, but will forever suffer punishment for their sin and will never see the bride, the Lamb's wife, Revelation 21 8-9. Their refusal to trust in Christ had imprisoned them in their sins, and subsequently in the lake of fire. We are truly glad you spent time to learn this lesson with us. We hope you are blessed and may share these with somebody else. Thank you very much, have a great week, and God bless you always, dear brothers and sisters.